welcome back to my channel. I'm Odefell and today we're going to be taking a look at the Doki Doki SR jean cosplay. It is also the Meow House cosplay jean costume because Doki Doki essentially um, is kind of like a see it as a towel agent. Kind of similar. Um, I know a lot of the SR costumes are one-third delusion so I just wanted to make it clear that if you're expecting this to be one-third delusion quality um, just be prepared, it is actually Meow House, and I've actually heard a lot of complaints because of that. Okay, so she is in here, and she is a mess. I want to start this video by saying this is not how it came shipped. Um, I took everything out just to make sure that I got everything. Um, so I will include some footage of how this costume came packed and what it looked like for those who are interested in that side of the review, and I will put that here. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I think the way I'm going to structure this video, and you'll be able to see it in the chapters down below on the bar as well, is we're going to do first impressions of each of the pieces, then I'm going to try it on because there's a lot of pieces to this. So honestly, it might be kind of a try on walkthrough because I might have to look at some stuff to figure out how it actually attaches. And then we'll do final thoughts in my critique and review and my rating of this costume. So without further ado, let's get started. I also want to start by saying I'm not sponsored by Doki Doki. I bought this for myself. I just haven't seen very many reviews of this costume yet. Um, and I'm someone who likes to look at reviews for costumes. Uh, when I ordered this, there was none on the website at all. I think there's one now, but I just wanted to do a review because I'm the kind of person that when I buy a costume, I look for videos like this. Our first piece in here is our top uh, tunic kind of um, piece. So. One of the reasons I love this costume is this navy blue um, brocaded style fabric. Instead of the cobalt nylon-y looking fabric I see in other builds, um, I also love the muted golds for her dandelion pattern here on the tails. Um, my one critique of that, just from the get-go, not a huge fan of glitter, um, but I do like the colors they use for this. I think it's prettier than the vibrant golds. Um, I will say I'm a little bummed out they use such nice golds on the costume as a whole, but the trim is very very gold and it actually um clashes a little bit in my opinion but it's not horrible <sighs> moving to the actual bodice itself i do really like that the black has a nice brocade texture as well the red is a nice satin for contrast and the white is actually leather um when i ordered this this did not look like leather pleather whatever you want to call it it's obviously not real leather um this did not look pleathery at all i expected this to be fabric um, I'm kind of intrigued to see how it fits, because already just holding it, I feel like it might be a little stiff on the chest. But overall, she is a knight, so maybe leather will give kind of that more battle-ready look. I'm willing to keep an open, an open mind about it. Um, again, with the chest, not super keen that it's glitter, but I do think it's one of the better embroideries I've seen. This and Wow Wow, I think, have the best Favonius crest as far as the seam work goes. The top here has a nice brocade as well, with this being real embroidery instead of being printed on. And a lot of the costumes have an embroidery or a printed on pendant here. We don't have that here, at least according to the reference photos of the costume I bought. We should be getting a pendant that actually clips in in some way underneath this to give us a real pendant there. So that's another thing I really liked about this is a lot of the pieces are genuine. Moving on to the buttons, instead of plain buttons, we do have cute buttons with little crests on them. So that's another added detail to this bodice that I enjoy. And then, you know, this is printed, but it's underneath. And I kind of like how instead of harsh stripes, we've got it kind of fading. Obviously I just took it out of the bag. So if you're gonna wear this, please iron it but it is a really pretty kind of fade rather than just being striped fabric underneath there. It is sparkly, but it's not its not too bad. I, I can suck it up with this shimmer. The back, we do have the corset back that Jean is supposed to have. Um, however, this is not a real corset. Personally, with how sizing goes, I prefer this. Um, typically when there's a corset back on something, I end up having to kind of 
French in all the way and you don't get this pretty detail because your laces are touching each other. So I kind of prefer this. Um, however, if you're someone that was hoping to cinch the corset back to adjust the size, keep that in mind when you're going to buy this costume that you can't cinch it down to a size. It will be this default size um, and they do include a ribbon to go with this as well. Instead of this being a functional corset, we do have the shape it's supposed to be paired with a side zipper so it'll open up on the side like that instead. So just keep that in mind as far as sizing goes, because I know sometimes I will go a size up or size down if I think I can cinch it in a certain way to fit, um, that this will not be able to do that. Up next, we have her capelet, and this is another reason I went for this. I really liked that the capelet felt, or at least looked, because I couldn't touch it, um, it looked like a heavyweight fabric. It looked like a wool or something that would actually keep you warm and actually be fabric used for a capelet. And that's one of the things that attracted me to this costume, and I will say I am not disappointed. It is a lighter weight fabric than I expected, but that's good because that means it'll flow in photos well. But it's heavy, like I was hoping, in texture and appearance. So one of the things I love, love about this capelet is the amount of embroidery instead of printing that's happening. So in my critiques of other sites is so much of the details are printed instead of being stitched. And that's just something that, as someone who likes to upgrade their costumes, foundationally isn't as great to me. Here we have awesome, beautiful embroideries on the underside of the collar. We've got our beautiful embroideries here, and it's one of the few companies I've seen do the cannon blue outline on her little wings. I will say, again, critique, I don't like that it's glitter, um, but it is very pretty and it does have the thick blue outline that we see in-game. Again, critique, they use such nice golds on their embroidery, and this is, again, that same bright gold we see on the top. Here we have snaps for her kind of, um, pinafore is not the right word, uh, there's a word for it, her big flower corsage metal piece, I can't think of the word, it kind of looks like a carnation that'll go right here. On the back, we have actual nice sewn-on trim for our shapes, again, fortunately it's glitter, this part especially did not look glitter on the product photos, so I'm a little bummed out that the cape has so much glitter on it, but what are you gonna do? Our back piece here is similar. It is actually stitched on, which I really, really like. This is the piece I saw printed on so many costumes and I just didn't like it. I will say this center one here is pinched kind of weird. I'm hoping if I go through and I can iron it from the opposite side or even lay something down to not melt the glitter. I can get this flattened back out again, but nonetheless, I'm just really happy that this is a stitched on piece instead of a printed piece because I think it just, it adds a depth to this cloak when it's actually stitching and embroidery that I just really personally appreciate with my costumes. I know some people love the way printed stuff looks, and I'm not gonna yuck your yum, but personally I like to avoid as much printed detail as possible. Our buttons here, again, are nice crested buttons instead of plain buttons, and they do descend in size. It is kind of interesting that they have snapbacks, though. Um, kind of strange, but I'll take it. Next, let's talk about the pants. So I've never seen jeans pants not be leggings, so I can't knock this for being leggings. I've never seen one company not do it that way. Um, it's something I'm personally thinking of upgrading for my costume, and quite frankly, I haven't really found a good way to do it yet without doing leggings, so I can't blame them. I will say these are extremely thick leggings, which I really appreciate, especially because we're dealing with white pants here. You still are going to probably want to wear nude or white underwear under this. I'm not going to say be bold and wear whatever you want, because it, at the end of the day, is white spandex. But I will say I was pleasantly surprised with how um, thick and form-feeling these felt. They don't feel like thin, cheap leggings. Um, additionally, I do like the side panels, but I feel like our little gold diamonds are a little peachy, and I'm hoping it doesn't just look like my skin tone when I have them on. But overall, again, thicker than I expected them to be for just printed cosplay. I'm going to sit this up here for now, because now we're getting into all of the small stuff, all of our little accessories. So we've got her waist belt here. Um, I do really like it. Again, another reason I, I, I wanted to go with the Doki Doki version of this costume is the fact that the belt had embroidered details instead of um, vinyl cricket looking details on it. I will say they were very slapdash when it came to our gems here and they're excessively crooked, but I mean, that's a small nitpick. And at the end of the day, it appears that they're hot glued on and I can probably peel them off and re-glue them with 
little to no struggle. Um, it is a Velcro belt as well, so if you need to adjust the size, it's very easy to just peel up the Velcro, either get a new piece or restitch it on further up the belt. I do also like that it is a nice navy blue pleather that they stitched it onto, so it really feels like a belt. So this is our ribbon. Um, excuse in the close-ups how um, kind of messed up this might be. My cat had a field day with it the second I took it out of the bag. So there's little tears and such on it that they did not ship it like that, I promise. My cat just glommed right onto this. Um, it is a kind of cheap feeling ribbon, I will say. I would not want to really put any um, tightness on it when I'm lacing up, but it is a corset for show. However, I'll probably still get a better ribbon because it just feels kind of stiff and cheap and plasticky isn't quite the right word, but it almost feels like floral ribbon, not sewing ribbon, if you know what I mean. I don't know quite how else to explain it. Almost closer to like a, a Christmas ribbon. Um, but they did include a ribbon for the corset. Next is our neck collar. It is leather to match the bustier portion of our corset, which I do like. It is that beautiful navy blue brocade. We do have a little bit of glitter, but it's that nice glitter that's the dark kind of um, bronze color we had on the dandelion, as well as patches that are unfortunately glitter. Um, but overall, I think the details are really pretty. We do have a nice metal snap there, and it does zip in the back, which is a little tricky and kind of hard to get on if you're putting this on yourself. I have a similar neck collar I use for Emma Frost and it's always really tricky to do yourself. I do prefer it a little bit to Velcro in the back though because you're less likely to catch wig hair in it which is nice but just be warned this is a little hard to get on on, on your own. Next are our arm sleeves. I have yet to try these on but I'm kind of nervous. To me they look cheap. Um, they're very shiny satin, which they might have done to just look more kind of prim and proper because she is a knight, but to me they look a little on the cheaper side, and the seam makes me feel like when I have this on, even with the costume, it's just going to look flat, it's not going to look round, like it's going to be hard to get this shape out of it, you know, like it's, it's very flat, almost like a, a deep sea fish we've got going on here. Um, Again, that's just me kind of nitpicking, you know, if I iron it a certain way or maybe heat it up in a certain way and kind of relax it, it might be fine. That might just be something that takes a little bit of styling to get to look right. Um, but I will say I'm a little disappointed in these. I was hoping they'd be a softer, kind of drapier fabric to really lay how they're supposed to. Before we get into the rest of the accessories, I will just touch on the bow real quick. It is a very nice sheer black fabric, honestly what I would have hoped they made the sleeves out of almost. Um, it's really pretty and I'm really excited. This is actually the wig I intend on using for Jean. As you can see, it's not styled yet, but I figured I'd wear it in this video to be thematic. Um, so I'm glad they sent this because I, as you can see, I'm not getting a pre-styled wig. So I'm very appreciative that I'll have my little ponytail bow ready to go. It just has like a little lobster clip on the back. Um, pretty basic, but honestly a really nice really cute kind of mesh see-through toolish fabric. Okay, so now we start getting into the parts of the costume I think are rough. Like the sleeves, I was like, mm, maybe I can make it work. Um, these gloves, <sighs> these gloves are extremely disappointing. I'll be completely honest. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, maybe it'll work for your hand. Maybe it'll work for your hand shape. Um, they are printed, which is, you know, whatever the gloves. Um, and then the metal details are actually glitter, which I also don't think looks the best. But besides that, the fit is just extremely weird. They almost fit like they were sewn upside down. Like this feels like this should be where the knuckles are, even though these are the knuckle details. Um, it might work on your hand shape. I might just have a weird hand shape for these, but I have very narrow fingers and very small hands and I still felt like these gloves were too small for me. I'll show you what I mean. First of all, I have very small hands. Like my my fingers, like my ring size is like a four, for example, if you're someone that has, you know, bigger hands than me, that might be something to take note of. Um, so I will pinch where the bottom of my fingers are. The fingers widths actually fit me spectacularly, which again, I'm a size four and like a size six. So keep that in mind when it comes to your fingers, if you feel like you'll be able to fit into these gloves, but I'll just pinch where my fingers actually are. That's the bottom, that's the bottom. That's the bottom, that all the way down there is the bottom. So I kind of feel like 
the fingers are very short, almost like I have webbed fingers, which decreases your grip, especially if you're going to be holding a sword or something in this costume. And as you can see, they just kind of fit bizarrely. Like I said, this really feels like this should be the knuckles and this should be the palm. In fact, let's go ahead and try one on upside down. I'm kind of curious if it'll fit better. It, it's still not great, but it does actually fit a little better. I don't know if you can see. So I don't know what they did with the patterning on this, but the gloves I think are, if not the weakest up there with the weakest parts of this costume. Luckily, it wouldn't be terrible for you to go out and find navy blue gloves, but for the sake of the video, I wanna let you know pieces that you would need to replace or pieces that just aren't good in this costume because if you're someone that just wants to get a costume and wear it and not do any changes to it, this is stuff you wanna know. The thumb pieces are also extremely long. Like my fingers are at the tips of all of these. This is the tip of my thumb. So that's also really weird. But yeah, this, this to me is the extreme weak point of this costume. I'm really not sold on these gloves. They're really, really rough, I'm not gonna lie. The next piece we have is the gauntlets, and I think I'm gonna pseudo review this in two parts because there's two pieces to this. This is the base of our gauntlet. It's not bad. Um, mine has a crease in it from being folded, but there isn't a seam there causing an issue like with the sleeves. So I'm convinced if you kind of flatten this out and lay it in a way where it can relax a little bit, it'll actually lay pretty good. It also has a pretty good shape compared to what you need. Um, again, this is a piece I will end up replacing, but for someone who just wants a good quality costume to go, I think this is actually pretty good quality. Um, it's leather, it looks good, it looks like it could be armor. I'm pretty actually impressed with it because usually I don't even bat an eye at the armor that comes with store-bought costumes. Usually it's extremely rough, but I think these are really usable and really an option and you could really kind of, you know, get the weird wrinkles from shipping out and make this a really good looking gauntlet. However, we get to our top panel and that's where I start to, mm, these might not look the greatest. This is the top panel that goes over this, kind of like that. Um, we've got our strap here that has a little Velcro hook. Okay, this is another piece that I'm really not keen on. First of all, I mean, look how easily that fell off. <laughs> You're gonna need to rig it quite a bit. Um, the glitter on the top, okay, it matches the rest of the glitter. I'll take it. I don't like it. I'll take it. Um, it is the nice same leather we have on the side. These side panels here, um, here's a better way to see it. This side panel here is like a thin glitter fabric and I feel like it just looks extremely cheap. It doesn't look like a buckle. I think it looks really bad to be honest. Um, here we have our kind of little gems. At least they did include those. I don't think they look phenomenal. I don't think they look bad, but I feel like with these glitter side pieces, it just looks really cheap and honestly diminishes a lot of what the base gauntlet was doing for this piece. This would be the easiest piece of the gauntlet to replace if you had to replace one. But again, I am reviewing this in the mindset of you guys are not replacing anything. You guys are just wearing this costume as is. Um, this strap is far too big. At bare minimum, you would need to lower the Velcro substantially on this to make it fit the gauntlet and stay on. Um, and overall, just I think the strap on this just is not doing it for me. I really don't like it. Next, we have the bag of all of our tiny accessories. And to be honest, a lot of these look a lot better than I expected them to be. I fully expected to have to re-3D print everything and re-sculpt everything and etc. etc. So I will say a lot of these are really good. First we have the Vision. The Vision has a hook here and then an O-ring here. I'm not sure if she has anything hanging from hers or if this is just the same cast these for all of them, because I think Venti might have like a feather down here. But nonetheless, this is metal. It does have a little battery pack here. It pulls out, you can put a battery in, so that way the vision also lights up, which is very cool. Um, I will probably try and figure out a way to get mine lit up as well. But uh, the vision's surprisingly good quality. I, I don't have anything bad to say about it. This is our little pin that goes on the neck piece. Um, for me personally, probably going to replace it um, with 3D printed wings, but it is another patch. It is glitter um, and it has one of the little gems here and it just safety pins onto the neck piece. I don't think it looks bad, but for me, I'm just trying to de-glitter a lot of this costume. It comes down to your personal preference. 
Here is our little carnation. Um, so these are kind of like the same trim fabric that's on the top, but sandwiched onto wire, so they are bendable. They're okay. Um, this part of it I, I might replace, but they are bendable, they are pretty nice, and it will um, ultimately match your costume because it's the same fabric. Um, they have little snaps here that align with the uh, coat corner. Uh, and this itself is a resin cast. This is pretty nice. A lot of the accessories are this real nice thick resin cast. Um, the tone of gold they have is a pretty good metallic and quite frankly, I might not change that part at all. This is our bead belt. Um, these are all resin cast, it appears to be, with spacer beads in between it. This is pretty good. It's gonna clip under our belt on one side and overall the resin cast beads look pretty good and the color gold matches the other gold pieces. They use the same paint. So this is a pretty good piece, I can't complain. It looks pretty spot on for what it should be. These are both belt buckles. I need to see where this one goes. I know this one goes on the main belt, kind of on the side here. The main buckle is resin cast and I think it looks phenomenal. It looks really good. Again, I'm not a huge fan of these glitter patches. The wings are another glitter patch. Um, but it's not horrible. Again, the glitter thing is mostly your personal preference, but the actual buckles themselves are, again, a nice heavy resin. Here are our earrings. So let me take them out here because I actually haven't opened these at all yet. Oh, they might not be for pierced ears, which is kind of nice. If you don't have pierced ears, I mean. Yeah, so these are, um, I feel like press on's the wrong word. These are screw back um, earrings and they're her little crosses and these are for people who don't have their ears pierced. So if you don't have your ears pierced, you can still wear her earrings, which is really nice. Um, I don't know if I'll wear them like this. Maybe I'll get earring hooks and reattach the little charm here, but it is really nice that they give you the option to screw these on if you'd rather have a screw back earring. So that's pretty cool. Um, and they're very nice metal gold too. I didn't expect the earrings to A, be included or B, be metal. I've seen a lot of jean costumes where they send resin parts for the jewelry. Lastly, here is our pendant or the booby area. Um, it has two kind of nice looking little chains that connect the main pendant. Um, I might end up getting a daintier chain just because these almost look like tennis bracelet chains and while they are pretty, we'll see how it looks. Um, again though, if I weren't to replace anything, I think this is really pretty. The fact that this is a physical charm instead of just being a weird detail either glued or embroidered onto the corset was a big, big sway for me, and I think this is going to look absolutely perfect attached to it. They also sent along some clear bra straps. I'm not sure if these are optional or if we'll need it to hook things together, but they did include these as well. So that is everything that comes in the Doki Doki SR jean as per the website. I will say they did also send additional stuff. Um, they sent me two hot glue guns, which is thoughtful, I guess. Um, and they also sent me jasmine flower seeds, it appears, which I'm a big plant person, so this is exciting to me, but it's a little bit of a weird flex. Overall, the costume has its hitches, but I'm really excited to see what we've got going on and to try it all on and see how everything fits. So let's go ahead and get into the next portion of this video. Okay, so I have the base costume on. This is just our corset top and our leggings. And now it is time to begin figuring out the rest. Um, but no, so pardon me for pulling these up constantly. They do kind of want to ride down something to note, um, but they fit pretty well. Um, they don't appear to be crazy see-through or anything. We've got our design on them. And then I'll show you how the top fits as well. As I was concerned about before, I think this kind of fits a little weird. Not horrible. I think this kind of is honestly a little flattering, makes me a little bustier, but it is kind of stiff and strange, but I'll give you guys kind of a better look. Um, I don't think I'm going to lace this today. I'm just not keen on the ribbon they sent, and largely that's the one detail that I'm like, okay, you know, um, but everything else, regardless of if I like it or not, we're going to try on or we're going to see what it looks like. And if it's confusing, I'll let you know where it goes, because I have a feeling I'm going to have to stop this video a couple times look at reference images or look at the listing to see where some of this goes because I just don't remember. There's a lot of accessories. As you can see, you're going to want a different style bra, um, probably a strapless bra, quite honestly. I'm going to see, I'm wearing a strap bra right now because I want to see if when everything's on it's covered because that would be great to be able to wear a strap bra. They're just more comfy. Um, but, but other than that, 
here's how the top fits. As you can see, like this is kind of weird. Um, not really sure how I feel about it yet, um, but you can see the really nice stitching here, um, our sparkle embroidery. Uh, it does hug the figure quite nice. I am a little sad I can't cinch it in like it's a corset because I could probably get another little bit out of it, you know what I mean? But overall, fits really well, pretty true to size. Uh, I, this fits a lot better than I thought it would. I really thought the leather would be a lot worse of a fit than it is. So this impresses me a little bit. It's still weird, but it's less weird than I expected it to be, you know? Again, I have one of these that I use for Emma Frost, so I'm decently aware of how tricky these can be. So let's see. Ooh, that might have been it. There we go, yep. Yeah. So here's our neck piece. It actually fits pretty well. I have a decently small neck, so I was worried about this being super baggy. It has a little bit of space, as you can see, but generally speaking, it fits really well. I think it looks really cute, and it sets on the neck very nicely. This is a very nice silhouette it's created. Before I get too far, too, I just want to show you guys the tails. The back of this is very nice, and it lays very nice. I want to do two of our accessories. I want to do our little neck guy here. And I want to do our little pendant that goes here. Now, a lot of these attach with safety pins, so <laughs> I'm going to go do this in a mirror because it's really hard to see what's happening. So I think positioning is going to largely be key. This is a little crooked. I need to, you know, fiddle with it. But I think that this looks really, really good. I'm really happy with how it looks and where it lays. And then this is our little neck guy. I think it's really cute. It's almost like a little bow tie. Okay, so let's go ahead and do these earrings next. So as you can see, here you can screw how tight this goes according to what you need for your ear, but also it kind of does one of those. So we're gonna put it on our ear and we're gonna see if this is already tight enough. Um, I feel like it'll already be tight enough, but it is nice that these are for people without pierced ears. So let's go ahead and try. And bam, just like that, we've got one in. Um, they look pretty cute. And this is where I got a little lost and I honestly had to look at a reference pic to figure out where all the accessories go. First, we're gonna start with a winged belt buckle. Now the winged belt buckle is gonna go in between where this little chevron is and where this little beginning of a V into the line is. And it's gonna face like this. This is really tough fabric to get through, I will say. There's one. This belt buckle is going to be here, and I'm going to use this one to kind of hide where our belt seam is. And we're also going to be attaching this as well. Okay, so this is on now, and I am going to take our little lobster claw, which I will say also looking at the listing, this is different. So it doesn't have this hoop at the bottom. I think this is one maybe for venti, um, but also the one in the listing is cast resin. So this is actually better quality food for thought. So now we're just gonna take this. I'm just gonna, and we're gonna hook it to the safety pin. Now I hooked it in the way where this is not gonna be resting on the clasp. It's gonna be resting on the kind of um, safe side of it as you will. Now lastly, we have this. And it appears this might honestly run from belt buckle to belt buckle, in which case we can probably hook these two little hooks here through the backs of the hooks we already hooked. I'll show you. So I'm thinking we can hook the hooks through these and drape it. Doing this without seeing it is very hard. I'm sorry I'm fumbling it so much. There we go. I actually didn't pin all the way through very well, but I think you could absolutely hook this here as well. But instead, I'm actually just going to hook to this little tab here and I'm just going to pin it there instead. Be really careful. This Velcro really wants to stick to everything and you don't want to snag everything. It's going to sit like this. So we've got this little guy here on this hip. We've got our beads that go around the back and we've got our vision <laughs> as it splits. That might be how I hooked it. I might need to flip it. 
Um, and we've got our vision on the back. Ta-da! <laughs> so next, I'm thinking the easiest thing will be the capelet. First things first, this goes on the capelet. Um, as I showed earlier when I took it out, there are three snaps. So we're going to go ahead and snap this on. Now I will say already this is wanting to pull up. Um, they did use hot glue and they did include hot glue, but that might be something to look out for. You might need to um, adhere that better. Um, I'm actually a little stumped on the best way to attach this. There are tabs underneath here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can put the clear straps onto this corset, put them through this and see if that's the best way to connect the um, cloak to the top. So here is one of our clear straps, and I believe our first hook is right here. So we're gonna loop that. So as you can see, there's a loop right here. This is what I'm thinking needs to go through. I think what we're gonna do is feed this through here. Okay, it took a little finessing, but I did get it through. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook to the back. That feels like it's decently on there, so I think that is, in fact, what you're going to do. Okay, and there is our finished cloak. I will say, um, this is a little floppy. I think the fact my wig is down isn't helping, but the collar has some really nice stand in it. I don't have to do much to get it to come back up. It is exactly the way it needs to be, so I'll show you a 360 what we got. Next is probably going to be the sleeves and the gloves, so I went ahead and I just threw the wig into a ponytail. I'm not calling this styled. I'm going to style the wig eventually, but before we get into gloves, let's go ahead and put our cute air bow in. Why not? I can't see it, but I'm assuming it's very cute. This is about to be a little bit chaotic as far as just, ugh, I don't like these gloves. But we're going to try them on anyway. So let's start with our sleeves. Okay, so these are, <laughs> they're on, there's something. Then we've got these, my favorite. These do zip, but I'm gonna see if I can just slide it on and kind of get the sleeve tucked the way it needs to be. Okay, I will say bunching, it does help the sleeves a little bit. This doesn't look horrible. I don't want to put the other gauntlet piece on because I feel like it's just going to make it look bad. Oh, here are our final pieces to put on and then we've done it. Oh God, I don't know if I can open this with these gloves. These gloves have forsaken me. My dexterity is low. Well, I knocked the gem off. Okay. There's one. Oh. Well, it doesn't fit well, so I'm just gonna do the other one not on my arm. That probably would have been easier. It's already hooked. Just gonna do that. That would have saved a lot of time. This is our finished jean outfit. This is what we've got. This is the Doki Doki SR costume. This is how it looks. We've fully gotten into the costume. How am I feeling? I already took the gloves and the extra gauntlets off because they were just wickedly uncomfortable, which is also going to be one of the things I talk about. So here are my thoughts on this costume. The things about this costume that are strong are exceptionally strong. The fabric textures, the embroidery, the resin pieces, all of the accessories along that line that are also resin, very well done, very well made. Even these base gauntlets, not terrible. For me, as someone who bought this costume fully intending and going out of their way to plan on upgrading it, this is the way to go. If you're someone that, that buys a base costume and you, you add things, you 
add armor, you change fabric bits, you do X, Y, Z, this is probably the costume for you. The base you're given is by far the best of a lot of the jean cosplays I've seen out there. This fabric is nice and heavy and woolen, and you've got the, the beautiful brocades and the embroidery on the leather and on the underside of this, stuff like that. I would have even been okay if the accessories weren't half that good, because I was planning on 3D printing a good bit of them anyway. So I think if that's the way you approach cosplay, this is probably the costume for you because you'll be able to excel and take a base that's a little better than average and make it something amazing. I think that the things that are weak on this costume are very weak. The gauntlets looked really bad. I'm not a fan of glitter. If you're a fan of glitter, maybe that's not a weak point for you. But for me, I feel like it kind of cheapens the look of the costume. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, in all around, just like some of the things are a little cheap, like the blue peeks out a little bit on the seam line or like something like that. Do you, you know, if you want something super high quality, those are the things you notice. If you are a cosplayer who wants to buy a costume and pull it out of the package, iron it, do your wig and be done, this is probably not the costume for you. Um, just being honest, I would not suggest this to someone who is either a beginner at cosplay or someone who is not going to upgrade it, just because the weak points to me are extremely weak. A lot of the stuff started to come unglued. Uh, the gloves are terrible, the gauntlets are terrible, and something like the gauntlets are going to be really hard for a new cosplayer or someone who doesn't typically make parts of a costume to fix or create. I think that there are other jean costumes out there that are a, a better base for people who just want to buy a costume and wear it. So that would be my recommendation, is if you're not wanting to upgrade parts, this probably isn't for you, unless, I mean, you've seen me wear it. Maybe you love it. Maybe you love the glitter. Maybe you can just get another pair of um, gloves and you have no problem with the sparkling gauntlets. In which case, go for it. You've seen what it looks like. It, it probably is for you. But general rule of thumb, that would be my suggestion. This is a costume that can be a really good base, but I think it needs a lot of work. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you like this video, please like it. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you see every single time that I post. Until next time, guys, I'll see ya. Special thanks to my patrons who make videos like this possible. Jason T, Jeffrey and Jack, Hugo R, Andrew S, Y, McDoog86, Andrew O, NY Nightwing, Brett M, Juju Kushin, Rom FT365, Austin, and Marco S. And this time's lovely fan art spotlight is this amazing piece of Mia's Valkyrie by Hendrik Nowak. Thank you guys so much.